It's hard to remember a mainstream movie in recent history that has provoked such sort of wildly uh, varying reactions. So it played, um, you know, a film festival in which it got a rapturous response and won big prizes and there was all these kind of five-star reviews, people being knocked out by it. And then very rapidly... These, this kind of backlash began about no, it's it's irresponsible, it's nasty, it's cynical, um, it's 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 something which is pretending to be better than it is. So when the first audiences saw it, I think they had fairly low expectations and were kind of astonished. And when the later audiences saw it, they read all the glowing reviews and were not astonished. And this weirdly kind of polarized very quickly. Bear in mind the film is only opening now, and we're already beginning to see the lash against back against the backlash okay so essentially i mean i know people will know this so it is an origin story of the you know of, of the the famous villain no uh no definite article joker it draws its inspiration equally from i think killing joke from the killing joke and also most importantly from martin scorsese's king of comedy and if you've seen the, I mean, Scorsese at one point was uh, attached to the project as an executive producer, as a producer. If you've seen the trailer, the very first thing you think when you see the trailer is, OK, wow, okay, that is deliberately invoking King of Comedy, not least because it also features Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is a television talk show uh, host, uh, you know, comedian who actually, I thought, in the film comes across very much as being a kind of incarnation of what Rupert Pupkin would have become at the end of King of Comedy, Rupert Pupkin manages you know, to become famous, got that whole kind of you know, about to be king for a day, then schmuck for a lifetime. And the film ends with this montage in which this guy who's basically a kidnapper and has kidnapped his way onto television is accepted by the media and is suddenly surrounded by this girl of applause. And I, I felt, watching Robert De Niro's character in Joker, that that's what he would have turned into. He would have turned into somebody who was smug and smarmy because the whole point about King of Comedy is that Rupert Pupkin is not heroic. Rupert Pupkin is not lovable or likable. It's not that he's misunderstood. Understood. It's not that he's a great talent who just needs to... It's that. That is a story which is absolutely about the way in which the media takes something and turns it into something else, making heroes of villains. So at the centre of Joker, you have the central character, played by Joaquin Phoenix, in this absolutely skeletal form. I mean, you, again, you've probably seen it. I know that there's stuff about... People always talk about weight gain and weight loss as being you know, oh, wow, the performance is so great. They put on 20 pounds, whatever. But he is positively skeletal. And he is a t sign twirling clown who is abused and uh, in the streets of Gotham. Uh, he's somebody whose life is fairly miserable. He lives with his mother in a very kind of Norman Batesy sort of environment. He has dreams of being a stand-up comedian. But his problem is that he doesn't seem to understand what anybody else in the world finds funny. And this is expressed through a condition that he has, which causes him to laugh inappropriately so whenever he's internally screaming or difficult in any circumstance which is difficult he laughs so there is this cackling laugh that resounds all the way through the film which pretty much is the thing which tells you this thing that, that his humor is out of kilter with the rest of the world he is embittered he is somebody who's uh he's going to see a healthcare worker about these constant uh, healthcare problems that he has but the program is being cut meanwhile gotham is overrun by super rats who are now feeding on all the garbage which isn't being cleaned up from the streets because there is a strike so he's you know he it's not a million miles away from saying, OK, fine, we're taking inspiration from Taxi Driver, God's Lonely Man. But these are not things which are flagged up subtly because the film is directed by Todd Phillips, who's in, previously uh, has achieved great success with the Hangover movies, which, let's face it, were never working in the area of subtlety. And what happens is that the central character who is, you know, put upon and, uh, you know, abused and in his own mind has this version of himself as a stand-up comedian, very, very Rupert Pupkin, becomes gradually more embittered by the world as he sees it through his TV screen, knows what he wants, knows what he wants to take, thinks that he is due things, and inevitably, having been uh, you know, put upon and abused by everyone around him, turns to a kind of a figure that we would recognise from Charles Bronson in Death Wish or maybe Michael Douglas in Falling Down. He becomes a sort of a vengeful figure. But more importantly, the image of him as a clown becomes a thing that is 
picked up by the rioting masses because Gotham is a city in which the rich are rich and the poor are poor and things are starting to broil up. And suddenly there's this kind of V for Vendetta style sort of uprising in which the clown mask becomes the symbol of the angry and the dispossessed. So the film is basically about society falling apart, collapsing in a cackling, killing joke. Now, here's what's interesting. Some of the words that have been used to describe the film, as I said, are irresponsible, uh, nasty, uh, mean-spirited. Uh, they are all words to, about which I would think, I'm not entirely sure which film you were expecting. For a start, um, the director, who recently in an interview said, in a way which is very unendearing, he said, well, he was asked why he's moved from comedy into doing this with kind of psychological, and he said, well, because woke culture has killed comedy, which makes you think, oh, for heaven's sake, really? And this is, this is absolutely a film which has a, you know, an angry, dark undercurrent to it. Um, it is a film which refers very, very blankly to uh, 70s classics and early 80s classics. It is a film which blithely invokes uh, Chaplin. It, it, it's not a film in which subtlety is a main register. But I thought what it was, was a film that certainly while I was watching, I mean, one thing I have found about it is thinking about it afterwards, I've become more uneasy about it. I had a very interesting conversation with Robbie Collin. Robbie Collin interviewed Joaquin Phoenix about the film, and Robbie Collin raised the, the, the thing that's been raised by a lot of people, which is saying, isn't it a film that's kind of incendiary? Isn't it a film that's going to incite people to, you know, to, to, to random acts of violence? And when Robbie Collin raised this, Joaquin Phoenix left the room. He then gathered himself and came back in sometime later. But it was, a, it was, a, it was obviously a fractured moment. And as Robbie said... The surprise is that he hadn't thought it through. He said that he left because he hadn't thought about the question. What a strange reaction. I know, it is a strange reaction, but then, you know, actors are not like you and me. Directors, you know, are similarly. My own feeling is that it is a film about the origin of a, of a character that we all know as a villain. It is a film about the, the sort of the fermenting, seething stuff that creates this character. It is a film that is directed by the director of the Hangover movies. And it is a film which at its centre has a character who is completely unable to connect with the world around him in the worst possible way, in that he's a clown who isn't funny or whose version of funny is completely at odds with everybody else. And one of the things that some people said is, well, he's a sympathetic character. No, he's not sympathetic. He's pitiful. It's a different thing. And actually, I thought that what the film managed to do, and I thought it did it very well, believe me, nobody went in with lower expectations than I did, because as you know, I am no fan of the Hangover movies. I thought it was, it did a pretty good job of depicting somebody's kind of descent into completely self-absorbed, narcissistic rage. I also think that the film is more complicated than its, than its detractors are giving it credit for. I think Joaquin Phoenix's central performance, which is very much... I mean, I'm a real sucker for, for physicality in terms of describing, you know, a character's uh, inner state, the external... You know, I wish I knew something about dance because I kind of think that in the end, probably if I actually understood dance, I would think it was the highest art form because I love that whole thing about inner states being expressed through outer movement. And from the very beginning, when we see there's a scene in which he's attacked on the streets and he runs after his attackers in his big clown shoes, so it's a great big lolloping gait. But even when he's not wearing the shoes, he's got the same gait. There is a consistency of the character. And I think that what the film manages to do, weirdly enough, we were talking about this in relation to good posture. Do you have to like the characters in a film to like the film? And I actually thought, firstly, I mean, I love King of Comedy and I didn't think that the film... Uh, invoked King of Comedy badly. I thought that it, it knew what it was doing. Secondly, I thought that that performance was very, very intense and had exactly the right register for the film in the terms of, you know, mixing the, that thing between sort of the, the, that slightly cartoony version of 70s hard-boiled cinema and graphic no novel origins and what one already knows about uh, you know, the central figure. I thought the performance was uh, was really striking. I thought he managed to do something new, something that, bearing in mind that, you know, Joker is a character who's been played by Nicholson and Ledger, and people have done really, really interesting things with the character, managed to do something completely different with it. And I did come out, my first reaction was, wow, I'm amazed that the director of the Hangover movies made that film. And then as I thought about it, I thought, no, actually, it makes sense. Because the thing with the Hangover movies, I never found them funny. I just found them cynical and nasty. And the thing with this is, that's kind of the point. 
the Joker is a cynical and nasty character. He's, 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 he, is a, he is a character who has been sort of boiled in... In, in in the loathing that is around him. But you don't, it's not that you think, oh, he's wonderful and he should be given his time because what he's suffering from is a, you know, is a, is a sort of internalised narcissism because it's rage, because he's been abused by the thing around him and he's turned rage. And I would ask the same question about how does one think about the Charles Bronson character in Death Wish, which is a film which incidentally people misremember. It's, you know, or how do you think about Michael Douglas in Falling Down? Those are the kind of the touchstones, I would think. Okay. Because after after Heath Ledger's performance, I kind of thought no one needs to do Joker so ever did I. again. So did I, and I was wrong. Okay.